From Krimu Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. Emerging natural gas producer Renogen's Virginia Gas Project in the Free States has the potential to position South Africa as a prominent player in the helium markets, making it the eighth country in the world to export helium. Simone Lietke tells us more. Renogen's Virginia Project also marks the construction of South Africa's first commercial liquefied natural gas, or LNG, liquefier, and will result in the dual listed company starting commercial production of both LNG and liquid helium by 2021. Stefano Morani, who heads Renogen, gives us a few reasons as to why this project is so significant. From a, from a national perspective, it's the first and only onshore petroleum production, right? Which, which we believe that in and of itself is quite, a, quite an achievement for the country. Next up, we've just introduced 700 million rand of foreign direct investment into South Africa, which is coming in at a time when the country definitely could use it. So we believe that that's, that's, quite, a, that's quite a marked achievement. Um, but then more importantly, this also marks the construction of the country's first commercial LNG liquefier. So this project will see us go into commercial production of both LNG and liquid helium by 2021. The last reason why, this, uh, why, why we believe that this project is so significant is the helium component. So this will mark South Africa as becoming only the eighth country in the world to export helium and where globally concentrations range from between 0.1% and 0.3%, um, our wells range from between 2% all the way up to 11%, which makes it arguably the richest concentration of helium on the planet. The project also has the potential to become a part of South Africa's gas future, which, naturally, could influence both energy and fuel consumption, but it may not be the silver bullet we're all looking for. Energy is quite a... Is quite a a contentious topic given how much demand there is for it and, and the, uh, the scarcity of supply and the, the, the erratic nature of its current supply. Would this field be the silver bullet that goes and solves South Africa's energy crisis? No, we're not touting it to be that. We're playing quite a niche market. We're using it as a substitution for diesel in vehicles, um, which has massive benefits from a greenhouse gas perspective, but also from a running cost perspective. Um, I think once this field, the second phase, has been fully developed and it's in full-scale operation, we'll probably be only substituting around 0.7% of the diesel that goes into trucks. So it's not major in that respect, but we, we feel that it'll probably offset quite a bit of South Africa's imports when it comes to energy and will make us a net exporter of helium. So overall, on the balance of payments to South Africa, it's quite important. So the project has everything that Renogen believes it has. What could this mean for not just the company, but the country as a whole? While speaking to Murani, it appears as though the project may just be the embodiment of the don't judge a book by its cover phrase. The big caveat with this is that our proven reserve is you know, 40 billion cubic feet or 0 0.04 TCF, which is not big by, by oil and gas standards. We have discovered a sandstone trap the sandstone trap, which is more analogous to your traditional oil and gas fields, your sandstone trap is a reservoir. This reservoir happens to be about 90 square kilometers in area and about 100 meters thick, so it's an enormous trap. We're busy testing that for gas now with a, with a horizontal drilling well. We commenced drilling about a week and a half ago. We're almost ready to get to the sandstone. The significance of that would be anyone's guess. What could it be? It could be as little as having absolutely nothing in the field, in the sandstone, to being larger than a Mossel Bay type discovery. Um, obviously we don't know until we've drilled it and we've tested it. It could be anywhere in between there, but we're still significantly comfortable that on the basis of our proven reserves, we've got enough to build out a phase one and phase two. Be online producing revenue by 2021 and have a phase two online somewhere between 2022 and 2023. Turning towards the global helium shortage, which not many people seem to know about, Morani gives us some insight into what exactly this means and whether South Africa could, thanks to Renogen, become a prominent player in this critical market. So <coughs> helium, aside from, aside from saving the world's party balloons um, <laughs> and keeping kids' parties going, the, um, the biggest challenge that we have is that the lack of helium is actually starting to impact hospitals. So it wasn't too long ago, actually, it was quite fortuitous. I was in Australia and at the time there was a, there was a shortage of helium in one of the hospitals and I ended up being on uh, in a couple of interviews over there as a result. The, the fact is, is that you need helium to run MRIs and CAT scans. 
but you also needed to manufacture electronics. You can't make TVs, cell phones, laptops. You can't make any of that stuff without helium. There's a major shortfall. And the major shortfall at the moment isn't going to be resolved probably around until 2025, 2027. The amount of shortfall is very significant. This field, as it stands now, for phase one would be a paltry 350 kilograms per day versus global consumption of 80 tons per day. Phase two could be anywhere on the low side, 1.2 tons up to the high side of five tons per day. At five tons per day, it would be 8% of world supply, roughly. That would be a meaningful amount. That would be an amount that would really put South Africa as one of the top producers. The Virginia project is not the only thing that keeps Renogen busy. Considering that the company launched its second CNG filling station in Johannesburg last month, the station will supply CNG to logistics company Black Knight's converted fleet. We hope that there are as many trucks converted to gas as possible. Um, in certain instances, under the right conditions, you can reduce greenhouse gas emissions by up to 90%. So just from a feel-good perspective, the more, the more trucks we get to run on gas, the better for everyone. The, the opening of the second filling station now in Joburg will be supplied by gas from this very plant. Um, <clears throat> Do we, see, do we see our rollout of more CNG filling stations? No, we're moving over to LNG. So the CNG filling station was to meet a very specific um, customer requirement. Um, Black Knight, one of our biggest off-takers, they required a filling station in Joburg in this interim while we get to the point where the LNG is, uh, is, uh, is online. And so we built this filling station on a bespoke basis for them. The groundbreaking event for Renogen's Virginia project is set to take place later this month. That's Creamer Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy. And don't forget to listen to the audio version of our Engineering News daily email newsletter.